Hey guys, Craig Benz here. In this video, you'll learn three unusual but very useful ways to use the Replace Color tool in Photoshop. In this first example, I want to bring out more of this pink in the sky, which can be difficult to do with other tools I might normally use. Before we can begin using the Replace Color tool though, it's important to know that it does not work with adjustment layers or multiple layers. We need to create a stamp copy. So hold down Shift Option Command E or Shift Alt Control E on a PC and that will give us a copy on top. This is just a duplicate of the image. So we're not deleting any of this content below. We're just merging into this new layer above. This tool does not work with smart objects and it does not work as an adjustment layer. Once you have this, go up to Image, Adjustments, Replace Color. That's where this tool is. And if you're used to the Color Range tool in Photoshop, you'll immediately feel very at home here in terms of how it's gonna to select tones in the image with this picker interface. The difference is that down at the bottom, you can adjust the hue, saturation, and lightness of the things that are selected in white up above. So this is kind of like a layer mask is the way to think about this. The easiest way to work with this tool though, because you can't preview this black and white out here, is simply to make some kind of a ridiculous adjustment down below. And that way you're previewing the change in the window, and then you can work on your targeting to make sure it hits the right parts of the image, and then go and refine these values at the end. So just make some initial adjustment so you can see what you're working on first. Now you have basically two controls here. You have this localized color clusters, which is going to determine how far the selection can go from what you clicked on. If I turn this off, it kind of changes the range where it works. I would say almost always leave this on. The other one is the fuzziness, which is the, basically the tolerance. If I slide to the left, then it's gonna more narrowly just pick the things that look like the pixel I clicked on. If I slide to the right, it can start expanding more in terms of tone and color. And obviously something in the middle here is gonna best select this pink sky. And I think we started pretty close. Right around that 80 mark seemed like a nice balance of hitting the pink, but without bringing out too much of the blue in the clouds. Alternatively, we can also make multiple selections. So if I just click on different parts of the image, you see each time I click, I'm getting a brand new selection here. It's just replacing whatever I did with each new click. But I can click on the plus and that will give me multiple selections if I want to expand the range, or I can click on the minus and that will pull things out. In general, I don't like using these tools very much in replace color. They don't operate as well as they do in color range, specifically the minus. At some point, it just simply stops responding to your request to take things out of the mask and it just almost kind of buggy. So I would just stick with the standard picker, click on the thing you want and adjust the fuzziness until you get the right amount of adjustment for your image. Once you're targeting the right part, we can now go and make adjustments here. So we of course have the ability to change hue, which is the color, and that's really what this is designed for. Normally, let's kick a little color here. Normally you'd be doing a color replacement by moving this hue slider around. So if we wanna make this more of a bright, punchy sunrise, well, warming it up by sliding to the right, seems like that's gonna do kind of a nice job. There's some value here where I can dial that in, and now I'm getting more of this you know, peach sunrise, which looks really nice. And that might be the direction you want to take this tool. In my case, I actually want to just stick with the original color. So I'm going to zero out the hue and I'm just going to bring in the saturation until I get enough of what I want. If I push it too far, obviously it doesn't look very realistic and there's some value where it's probably just right. I think right around 45, I like that result. We can preview from before and after and see how much nicer that looks. Let's go ahead and click OK and we're done. That's really all you need to do with this tool. You can, of course, add a layer mask at this point if you needed to be more specific and just reveal this change in certain parts of the image, but I think it looks great here. So let's move on to our second demo. In the second scenario here, I wanna bring up more of this yellow sunset sky. And the problem here is not that it isn't saturated, it already is. If I were to go and create a new saturation adjustment, if we go to hue saturation and let's bring our saturation up, Notice that nothing really happens for that yellow. I mean, it does change it a little bit from before and after, but in general, the problem isn't that there's saturation. The problem is that it's too light. So we need to bring down the lightness and we could do this with the HSL tool, but it's gonna be very tough to apply it in a natural way to hit just the areas we want. So let's go ahead and just delete that layer. And instead we'll use the same replace color layer. I'm gonna hit Command J to create a duplicate. So I always have my original to work with Go up to Image, Adjustments, Replace Color once again. Same process, let's click on the thing we want to adjust. 
Notice if we kick up our saturation, we're not really seeing much of a change here. What we need to do is start bringing down the lightness, and that's where we start getting that yellow glow coming through, is bringing the brightness down a bit to go from before to after. And you can see how that comes through very nicely here, but of course it's also affecting the waterfall. So let's go ahead and click OK, and this is the scenario where I want to use a layer mask. So we'll go click on a new layer mask, hitting B for my brush. I can then simply go, let's switch to black paint, and I can paint over these areas where I don't need to reveal it. So I'm just removing that adjustment by painting black on my layer mask, and I've gone from before to after to bring up a nice extra bit of color. And of course, you can always change the opacity if you want more or less of that effect. So I can bring that down a bit and just really dial it in where it needs to go. The third way that you might consider using this tool is actually for dodging and burning. If we use standard dodge and burn tools on the sand, which has a lot of color, you end up with this conflicting tension between making adjustments in the tone of the sand dunes and the color of the sand dunes. The nice thing about replace colors, it lets you independently adjust these things. So let's start by hitting Command or Control J to duplicate the layer just to have a safe copy of it. Then we'll go back up to Image, Adjustments, Replace Color. And of course, we want to click on the highlights of the sand dune, which now let us target these areas. So we can go and adjust, say, the lightness here to dodge or bring out that value. And of course, you're seeing that typical problem of the color has been wiped out as we made this adjustment in lightness. The nice thing about this tool is you can just simply bring up the saturation to adjust that. So you have this ability to affect both of them, but you can very easily fix one when it gets off the rail. So if I make the image too light, I can bring up the saturation. If it makes it too colorful, I can bring it down. And of course you can play with the hue as well if you wanted to make some more subtle adjustment here to make the sand a little bit more red by bringing it off to the left a little bit here. So in general, I would probably push up the lightness on that just a little bit more. Saturation just a little bit more to keep that. Let's take a look from before to after. And you can see that does a really nice job of bringing out that texture in the sand. I'm just gonna dial back the result a little bit from where we are here. One thing to watch for with lightness is it can make the shadow areas be a little bit kind of blown out. So if you're getting that, be careful with the range that you're using here, the fuzziness. If I bring down the fuzziness, that's gonna keep things more on just the highlights here without spilling into the shadows and kind of polluting them by lightening up those shadows. And I think that does a really nice job adjusting that in the end. So there you have three great ways to use the Replace Color tool in Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed that guys. Be sure to ring the bell and click the subscribe button to be notified as I continue to release new Photoshop tutorials.